Welcome back to another episode of the Burning Ship Podcast, where a group of friends gather to talk the latest in nerd culture. I'm Frankie. My name is Jason. Here's Ivan. I'm Louis. And this week we'll be talking about how E3 will be shaking things up and the exhibitors that have been leaked so far, the Unpacked 2020, what they have in store, and the Oscar winners of the recent Oscars. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe or follow us wherever podcasts can be found. So, how have you guys been? Doing all right. Can't complain, can't complain. Pretty good until now when I heard your grammar spill that. I'm sorry, I had to, like, basically just, yeah. The recent Oscar <laughs> winners of the recent Oscars? Is that what you said? Yes, and I, I yeah. I don't know. I was trying to phrase it somehow, and for some reason, it came out like that. Today, we're talking about the recent Oscar winners, everybody. There we go. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So, you guys haven't done... But, I done... mean, other than that, all good, though. But, other, uh, you guys haven't done anything as of uh, recent? No. Not that I can think of. <laughs> no? Just a slow week. Slow week. Really? House buying. Oh, house buying, you say? That's been going on for a while, though. It's just mm. a process. Mm, it's been. I got my free pizza today. Oh, man. was it free or did you get it delivered with wings? No, this just made the right decision for me to go and just pick them up. So I just yeah. wanted to go ahead and pick them up. Good choice. Yep. Because why pay an extra ten dollars when you can just get it for free? Exactly. And the the reasoning was kind of ridiculous. I mean, they have carryout deals right now for like eight bucks for for a large popping pizza. It's pretty good. That's actually that's not, pretty good. That's not bad. Mm. Tell me why you get a coupon for having it delivered early, but when mine's two hours late, they're like, "Sorry, it's cold." <laughs> it's put cold. it in the microwave. Yeah. Do you do the thing where you put water with the pizza if you microwave it so the bread stays hydrated? No. No, you just eat dry bread. Yeah. You see, I, I, I we have a little microwave oven. And so I put the pizza in there, so when it comes out, it's like nice, crunchy, and toasty. I could get behind that, but it's real good. Microwave pizza, it's all right. Wait, I will tell you, cold out of the box pizza is fine. That too. I hate all of you. Which which do you (laughs) prefer though? Like, because there's people out there who's like, oh, cold pizza is the best. Like, I'd prefer cold pizza over like reheating microwave. Look, if it's freshly made, it has to be hot. Okay? Of course. Mm-hmm. But if you order something that's freshly made and store it, might as well just eat it cold. It's going to be best best like that. I refuse. I refuse to eat cold pizza. I, I'm with Jason. Like I, I have to heat it up. Like I can eat cold pizza every day. I <clears> know <throat> you can. For some reason, cold tomato mm. paste just does not... It does not go well with my palate. Look, listen... There's more divisive issues than cold versus hot. Like, being in the right camp of pineapple and being in the wrong camp of pineapple. <laughs> I mean, everybody knows that the right camp is the one that has pineapple on pizza. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Yeah. Pineapple on pizza. I mean, Perfect. I'm outnumbered here, so... Because it's the we, right camp. It's not the right camp. Now, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna throw a radical idea out there. Because I saw this recently on, like, a food show. There's a guy who made it like an artesian pizza, but instead of uh, tomato paste, he used uh, pineapple puree. Okay, now we're getting into some weird... uh, (laughs) And al pastor. And it looks very good, not gonna lie. Oh, but it's an (laughs) al pastor pizza. So wait, this al pastor with pineapple, I mean, you're not (laughs) doing anything wrong there. Yeah, that's that's to be expected. Yeah. I'm okay Substituting the tomato paste for the puree? You fine with that? Yeah, I think I could be be fine with With that. With al pastor, yeah. Me too. I can live with it. Um, what about putting kiwis on pizza? I saw that's that. A, recently. That's a sin. Really? That's Ki- a... Kiwis on a pizza? Have you ever seen that post? No, I have bad. not. Pizza just it looks, looks bad in general. It's now, because it has green. Yeah. It looks now, like it's like molding. If they can make it look better, maybe. Because that's I like... assume it's the same thing though, right? Like it's put the like kiwis the after tank. they come out of the oven? No, and, it's put in with the oven. Like, yeah, yeah, so it's getting other. burnt and crusty. No, but to make it like look better, you know. No, I mean that's what they're saying. Mm-hmm. 
it comes out of the oven with the kiwis. No. Well, I mean, you got to see how many people do kiwi pizzas, gross. you know? True. Because the, the one that's floating around the internet, it's just like, looks awful. <laughs> yeah. I think all three of us have seen that one, except Frankie. I think I think in, in general, you have to have the mindset of, you'll try it at least once. I will try it at least once. And then, I, then after I try it, I can say it's actually got all. <laughs> so wait, what pizza places are doing kiwi pizza? Mm, I probably have to get to like an artesian one. Yeah. Oh, that looks weird. No, he found it. Make sure you post it on the podcast so everybody can see. Is this the one you guys were talking about? Did yes. Put, yeah, that's a bad yeah, image. That's the one. Here's a better angle. Doesn't that's make it look a, at us bad. That but looks bad. Still, that is bad. It, but it, wait, it looks green. over. It, it looks overtly covered in kiwi. What's is that? What what is that? The sauce that's on top. I don't know. I want to say that's like some sort of like light Tabasco. <laughs> it just makes me feel better about it than the top one. That one looks like. That one looks like it, the top one looks like it has no flavor. The bottom one looks like it has too much kiwi. Kiwi should be like like a like like pineapple. It shouldn't overpower the main topping. Yeah, in my opinion, it's complimentary. Um, do you guys know that uh, both pizza places that we have here, Pizza Hut and Domino's, have a buffalo sauce for the pizzas? Yeah, I do. So my sister's boyfriend does a mix of buffalo sauce and the regular tomato paste. Wait, why? Really? Yeah. He does a, He asks for it to be mixed together and then spread out on the pizza and then does it like normal on top with like, uh, like say for instance, if he was a Hawaiian, but he asked for the sauce to be the both mix. And apparently it's a, like a different combo hmm. that I might try one of these days. Because I mean, Cause I got a pizza right now. I don't know when I'll have it next time. I mean, I've had like buffalo, buffalo chicken pizza before. It's not, it's not that bad. But at the same time, like mixing the tomato paste with the barbecue sauce, mm. buffalo sauce, buffalo sauce. My bad, my bad. Yeah, barbecue sauce. Nah, that's a different story. No, yeah, I meant I meant buffalo chicken, uh, pizza. Mm-hmm. But yeah. No, one other thing that I mean for me it was uh that I did actually it was a cabin trip. Oh, how was that? And part of it was good, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, other part that was pretty bad as. Because it was snowing, not that many people that went were prepared, especially their vehicles, mine included. Really? I yeah. I mean, you, I mean, I'd re- expect to to be <clears throat> prepared because you know you worked at a dealership. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm I was prepared to, to do pretty much anything, but when it got to the part where right before we get to the cabin, there's like this little steep hill that you need to have official snow tires. We did not have those. And uh, none of our cars got up, so we had to hike up a thousand feet, which was decent, but it was still snowing, so that was also a problem. Hmm. Uh, one girl didn't make it at all, all the way up at all throughout the three days that we were there because her tires were completely bald. Really? So her car just stayed down? Yeah, it just stayed down. And then uh, when she was finally going to go home, it got stuck on some ice that didn't melt because it was under her tires. So we had to call out a tow for her. Oof. Yeah. And this is why I'm an introvert. <laughs> this is weird. I mean, a, a cabin trip sounds fun. No, no. I'm just kidding. I'd go uh, anywhere with friends. Just say, hey, Evan, you want to go? And that'll be like, ooh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Evan, I'm planning this uh, trip to like... Bullshit. <laughs> to, to, to like Hong Kong, you know, China. You're abandoning in us to... Go. Oh, are you expecting me to be scared to go to China just because of what's going on? Hell no. We'll book first class <laughs> tickets right now. Eat all or, the delicacies. Come back and then get quarantined. <laughs> uh, I think you get quarantined before you get on the plane. Yo, how do you guys think the the what did what did they name it now? It's not the coronavirus anymore. They they actually gave it. it like, it's still called the coronavirus, I'm pretty sure. They, they it's called it an the official uh, name. I thought they called it officially from the what well, were the region it was based on is the Wuhan. No, it's it's something new. I heard it recently too. Oh my! Let's see here. Let's Corona see. Vi- virus. Uh, uh, oh, COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. Yeah, yeah COVID nineteen. Yeah. Do you do you know why they changed it to COVID nineteen? Is that the official official name? Yeah, that that's the the official name. Okay, but why out of a sudden? 
did they start calling it COVID nineteen? Uh, I forgot. Um, I I heard of it before, but I don't remember off the top of my head. But uh, what I was trying to get at is, how do you guys think this uh the co COVID nineteen is actually going to affect the uh twenty twenty Olympics? Because that's well, in Japan, right? Yeah, it's in Japan. Well, I'm sure they got to get screened. Well, any Chinese athlete probably has to get screened regardless. It's not like Japan is suffering or has like any quarantine zones. Mm -hmm. So I I think it's just going to proceed as normal. I mean, I don't know the issue. The only like it probably you might see like a small uh, a a decrease of tourists from China, a small decrease, just depending on how it's going. Mm, Okay. So I, I looked it up here and COVID it's called COVID-19. The 19 part is because of the year. So like if there was a new uh out- coronavirus outbreak in 2023, it'd be called COVID-23. But um, let's see. The name COVID was chosen chosen so as to not refer to a geographical location, an animal, an individual or a group of people. And which is also pronounceable and related to the disease. So yeah, where are we going with this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was just uh, my my question was like, what what do you guys think would uh, how it would affect the the Olympics? Not much, if at all, negligible, in my opinion. But yeah, that that was what what I was going to say about it. Anything else you guys uh, did this week? Or past two weeks, actually. All right. I just pretty much said it. Everything. I don't think I had anything else going on. No. Cool. Nothing comes to mind. So, do you guys know what's what's going on with uh, E3? Because things are, are being uh, changed up and stuff like that. And then the list of uh, the actual, like, exhibitors are going to are been leaked, right? Uh, I don't know if it's all of them that got leaked. I would want to say with Uranus, it's like a few. Um, I've I've kept in touch with it a little bit, but just been well, trying I mean, to keep myself updated with it. From that list, uh, Xbox still isn't on in there, even though on Twitter and everywhere else they claim they will be there. So I don't know how up to date that list is either. Well, it could be. Well, it's it's interesting because the while while Microsoft is there, they don't have their conference. At their at the ESA show floor, they have their own like they have their uh, they have their own theater where they where they present stuff. Make <laughs> sense? Yeah, but I don't know. I guess from what I've seen in the past years, it has been part of it, and now it is not. The one that concerns me, and I guess the direction they might be taking E three is, I see Amazon on there, so. With Amazon being on there, it's, I guess to me, it's that they're trying to be more towards that uh, cloud gaming service mm-hmm. that they're trying to push forward. Maybe they're going to try to get a big surge and focus in that. Well, wasn't it uh, <clears throat> Microsoft that was like, oh, the only like cloud service competitors that we have are uh, Amazon and Google or something like that? Yeah, Phil Spencer said that his his main focus right now is uh, with Project X Cloud, and that he sees uh, he sees more competition from Google and Amazon. Uh, the, I mean, it's a quote that's been taken out of context so much now at this point, where people are like, "Oh, he's shit talking <laughs> the other two, where in reality he's not. He's just stating his projections and stuff going forward. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, Amazon Games, like so far, what do they got? Like. What do they got? Amazon. Yeah. I don't know. They got they got money to spend. <laughs> I mean, you're you're not wrong about that. But do you think they're gonna like show off maybe something like how the how Stadia was like? Oh, introducing yeah, they'll, the... they'll definitely show off like some sort of like Stadia like equivalent. <laughs> but hopefully, they can learn from Stadia's mistakes <laughs> and not overpromise. Well, I mean, I doubt they're gonna overpromise. Regardless, I just hope that they they take more in consideration with the architecture because I know XCloud from internal testings. People have said it's been pretty good on for them. Mm-hmm. Again, I just personally don't think that most of the world is ready for cloud based gaming. It's still years away. <laughs> so, 
see it being pushed out right now. I don't know. It might be like ahead of its time. No, oh, yeah. I, I see Amazon launching this and the controller will have a Doritos and Mountain Dew button. So all you should <laughs> do is just press the button and it'll be primed now. So that way you'll get it in two hours. Oh, yeah. More or less. See? Double XP weekend is becoming a thing now. Their prototype Again. Is- the prototype is literally just uh, two dash buttons on, on the sides of a controller. Mm-hmm. And it just opens up the Amazon page. That's it. Like, buy stuff. <laughs> buy stuff. Uh, but let's see. that the Epic Games is going to be there. Flipso Media Group. Fortnite 3? Oh, Fortnite 3. Um, let's see. So far, there hasn't... Uh, what's... Uh, the... I forgot the game, the game company, the the pre pre show company people. Devolver Digital. Devolver, there we go. I don't see their name on the the list, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be there. They're never there. They're, yeah, they are never at E3. They have their own thing where they just literally like show it. No, yeah, but okay. Oh, so this is just like people that are actually gonna have like a booth. A booth at the yes. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Then, uh, what's it called? Uh, Geoff as, uh, well, is, yeah. Geoff. Geoff. Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Geoff. Uh, he declines to participate in the show. Uh, do you guys know why? Like, is there. So, for, co- I think it's more important to build up context. So, yeah, Jeff that- Keighley, um, person who, uh, hosts and runs the game show awards which is like probably the one of the most prominent award show for for video games i'd say uh probably dice might come second but um so uh, on and off he's been participating in the e3 uh expo in one way or another for the past 25 years co- consistently right every year he's been a part of something directly tied to e3 whether it's been announcing um <clears throat> or even hosting some of its uh uh, some of its uh, own events and stuff. Like I know the E3 Coliseum, he also took part of. He used to do hosting for that as well. But uh, so people have been asking him, oh, stuff about going uh, in regards to E3 because there's a lot of people um, that ha- I express concern with what the ESA has been trying to do and with trying to change things going forward. So they were wanting some input from someone who might have a bit more knowledge. And then I don't I don't know how long ago it was, maybe like a couple of days ago, where he put out a statement on his Twitter saying, oh, explaining basically what what I was iterating is he's been part of it for the best 25 years, though this year uh, he declined to host the E3 Coliseum and that he's not actively going to be at this year's um, E3. E3. Hmm. So <clears throat> with that in mind, you got to keep um you gotta wonder what the hell is going on with someone who's been consistently a part of it and then decides, knowing what he knows, decides to not participate in it anymore. Yeah, because he was there on some of the years where it wasn't the absolute worst. You know? Well, what year was it where literally everybody's like, what the fuck was the point of that E3? There was a lot of them, but there was one I remember in particular, I think like in 2012 or something. I, think I want to say it was. I want to say it was the year after they announced Xbox One and PlayStation, because after that it was just a year filled with software, where people. Were... No, it wasn't software. <laughs> it was uh services like add-ons to the consoles, like oh, you can watch YouTube and Netflix now and stuff like that, where mm-hmm. they didn't talk about games like whatsoever, pretty much. Yeah, and it was like thirty minutes at the end, like this is games. So if he I think that, did that was twenty thirteen. But I'm saying, like, if he did that, and he's refusing to go to this one, that's scary. That's a scary sign. Uh, according to the this Polygon article, that uh, it says that in an email to them, he wanted to let people know what to expect or not uh, before they start selling tickets, and that he just doesn't really feel comfortable participating participating given what he knows about the show as of today. Exactly. So, which is scary. <laughs> so it might not get that much, or yeah. it, it's gonna be that like a bad, bad showing this year. Because what's it called Nintendo's not gonna be there, right, Evan? You Nintendo's I, never there. Yeah, they have the Nintendo Direct. Yeah, 
which I'm very, very, very starving for. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Animal Crossing. <laughs> I already showed you that those things are going for like 400 now, 450 on eBay. Yeah, I saw. Really? So, so yeah. Get yours while you can, if you can still find it. Were you able to get apparently it? Pre-order yeah, I already paid it off. Oh, oh very nice. I paid it off. I'm just waiting to pick it up. This man is crazy. Please <laughs> oh, stop know. him. I can't. <laughs> Remember, I traded in my old Switch in order to pay, like, put a good chunk of it off, so it didn't really cost me the full retail value. Mm-hmm. But even still, it, it was, a uh, what, 300 for it, or how much is it? It's was still it? around 300 plus tax. Um. So I got my Switch, that one I traded in, I got it pre-owned, and I got it on a deal to where I got more of trading it in towards the the, the Switch this time than I did paying for it, so balance I mean, that's out. good. I guess it's yeah. fair. You know what wasn't fair? Frankie making fun of you after you had no Switch. I oh, didn't yeah, was, mean it, I hurt. forgot. Yeah, this man just was like, oh, who wants to play Smash, guys? And fucking hurt my feelings. I forgot. Everybody did it as... <laughs> I think he did it as soon as you got on to. Yeah. yeah he did. Uh, wow. I can't believe it. Look, I forgot, okay? And you call this man family, too? Yeah. <laughs> I call him family. He is family. Well. <clears throat> family is a strong word. It's uh, amigo. <laughs> uh, brushing that aside. So let me guys uh, ask you a question. Yeah. Well, so with people dropping out and then people... And companies themselves just not participating anymore. How important is it to have an E3 like the way it is now? Or how much do you think the interest is still there? I mean, I th- feel the interest is still there, but it's more mostly because uh, of the name E3. It's what people expect and stuff like that. Like, so like, it's like, oh, it's E3. So the, the, the hype is still there because of the name and stuff like that. I don't think it's the hype. I think it's more so the culture of mm. how E3 was. Because you mean, even as when I was growing up, I'll be excited when E3 will be coming up because I'll be like, oh, what new stuff is going to be announced and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But then over the years, it's like, oh, E3 is just coming. That's it. It, wasn't, it hasn't really been like, oh, I can't wait to hear what's going to be announced. What do you, what are your thoughts on them actually laying more the public in and having it not be like for like just the like the the big the big people in games? It's more like pandering to the culture, I think. But do you think they should have stayed how they used to be, not laying the public in, or do you think the them laying the public in now is is a right way to go? Because Honestly, me, I feel like they should have just left it how it was, where the in- people of the industry and uh, everyone else watches the, the live streams and stuff like that. Because there's other conventions, like, uh, I know, PAX and stuff like that, that they they it's for the public. But E3, mm. to me, is like, oh, it's for the people of the industry. Well, now you have the DICE Awards. Kind of, and that's closed off. People don't really get in. Um, there isn't. I mean, there is. Um, what's that one thing called? Uh, it's off the top of my head. They announced some stuff on it, and that I know that's also closed off. Um, SEC or some? No, no, no. That's something completely different. I'm, I'm completely blanking. But it's something like where they have like, um, game share holders statistics and stuff, but they also. Talk about upcoming ventures um, <clears throat> to their business partners. Mm. And sometimes that that's usually around the time where stuff gets leaked. But off the top of my head, can't really think of anything. What about you, Jason? Um, I'm in the same boat, to be honest with you. Do you think E3 should have stayed private? I think so. I think better things come out of it that way. You know? When it's like, I don't know. I always saw E3 as like companies being like, a dick measuring contest to be like, <laughs> oh yeah, you revealed this, just you fucking wait, and then they come out with a better show. Like out now, <laughs> exactly. That's when we get the out now, you know, kind of announcements. And I out feel now like it doesn't have years, a cool factor as it used to, you know. It, I mean, it doesn't because some of the games that are quote unquote released out now 
uh, no offense, are usually like indie titles that are not expected. That have been out on PC forever. <laughs> yeah, that too. Like just ports and stuff. So to me, I feel like that kind of competition slash, you know, excitement or secrecy is also gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel yeah. You can definitely relate. <clears throat> but um, I mean, personally, I think I'm in the same sentiment as you guys where I think it should have stayed more of a private outing. I get why they opened it to the public. They need funding. Mm-hmm. That thing draws in so much money. Imagine well, yeah, how much the pass has cost. 250 for three days. At least and in the past. They're probably going to sell out. The thing is, though, it's like, if you're a gamer, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure, like, for me growing up, I always was like, oh, I can't wait to go to E3. I, I want to go to E3, like, one year in my life. Just one. And every time I hear, like, other YouTubers or, like, influencers go in and say, oh, I went to E3, it was fun for what it was, but literally you're paying $250 to stand in line for four hours a day playing one game. <laughs> and only for, yeah. like, 10, 20 minutes. So that's what it really is that you're like gonna Paper? get out of it, but yeah. the experience of just going and being there in the atmosphere is what I think is the appeal for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's the same situation with most uh, video game cons. At least that's what I experienced going to like PAX East and stuff like that. The big heavy title, it's like you're where it, you're gonna be waiting in line for like an hour or two hours just to play like the short demo i mean can we just say that that's expected with most conventions regardless no well i i said most not all i feel like that's generally the video game ones because i know we went to a wall you were there as well lewis no i wasn't what are you talking about but that one it's like we went to the panels and then we went to the showroom and stuff like that we we for the most part, we didn't wait in any line. We like we just walked around, other than like the the panel lines, but that was about it. Well, also like it wasn't really a gaming focused convention. It's it, like Momo. Momo was more of a gaming focused convention, and in there, it's the lines aren't long. Typically, what I've noticed is that more most con goers for those smaller cons don't. Um, are a little too shy to stand in line for a game unless they're really into it. And most of them are like, are indie, I would say. There might be a couple developers that are major developers that will show off some games there, but for the most part, it's indie games. And it's it's fun to go and visit those. Yeah. Because otherwise, you won't really experience them outside of that usually, or you won't have any knowledge of them. Because mm-hmm. they don't, you know, advertise them anywhere like that. Yeah, I I get that because there was a couple games that I played when I went to to PAX East that it's like it's indie games. Plus the indie games are like the lines aren't that that big, so you just go and then like just go up to the booth and play it right away. But mm-hmm. I know I know like this year I am jealous because I'm not going this year to to PAX East, but my friends are, and mm-hmm. they are going to have the. Uh, What's it called? The ah, I I forgot Actual the name. Experience without you? What? I'm sorry. Wow, that's like it's a low blow. That is. I'm sorry, Frankie. It was an easy opportunity. <laughs> I took it. Wow, you know. You're not just, sorry. Not sorry. I was gonna say you're not gonna use this trip to write it off. I I don't have money. Wow. Uh. But uh, <laughs> no. What what I was gonna say? Uh, they're gonna have the the Last of Us two. Uh demo there and i was like oh i really wish i was able to go that you would definitely stay in line for a couple hours when does back east again uh it's actually two weeks from now and the okay okay i was just trying to make sure because i'm like the game comes out in may (laughs) it's like (laughs) if it's a fall convention it doesn't even matter because the game would be out no yeah it's it's literally pax east is in two weeks okay it's not too bad but yeah, but I'm I was low on money, so I can go this year. I was, you know, it blows my mind. It's it's hard to believe that it's just been like a year since the game, and then subsequently the game comes out to be announced. I'm talking about Borderlands Three because it was announced at PAX East. Yeah, and that's why I'm thinking like it hasn't been that long, has it? It's been a year. <laughs> yep. 
Almost it's such a, a short, like, from no one, no concrete confirmation to confirmation to game. And DLC now. And DLC. And DLC. There's only one pack right now. And level cap increase. And so I'm just like, holy crap. What happened? <laughs> Time flies, my dude. 2020. Ugh. Man. No, no, I'm not. All right. But yeah, Should we talk about that. these uh, mm? Samsung phones? Yeah. So, Unpacked 2020 happened, and they showed off the uh, knockoff Razer phone. Knockoff or upgrade? Like I was saying before the show, you know, like, people have been doing some research on the on the new Razer phone and give it a shelf life of, like, a year or a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, a ridiculously low number of times that you can actually flip it open and not before the screen starts deteriorating. So, I'm like, is that even... That's not helpful. But, like... This this thing, <laughs> the Z Flip, mm-hmm. that's what it's called, I guess. Would it fix that issue? I'm assuming with a more prestige company like Samsung, they do more more. Uh, they'd spend they shell out more money doing research and development on it. I'd hope. Well, is this phone gonna have the same issue that the uh, the uh, Samsung uh, the foldable tablet one? I doubt it gonna have where it's like you're it like you're not allowed to to have screen protectors on it they're more than likely oh you yeah, know shit yeah there's really <laughs> nothing you can do about that the only the only thing you can put a screen protector on is maybe like the front part <laughs> they'll probably do a dual uh screen protector system you see, that, I see or that. They'll, that or they'll have just plastic ones yeah, yeah. like the old school plastic ones yeah imagine trying to put a plexiglass cover on that <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> I mean the other thing that's been a problem with these uh flippable foldable phones is that little gap between the folds where dust has been getting into. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, but they said that they have addressed this with uh with the new one because the Z20 an earlier prototype with it uh did have that issue and it was damaging the screen. Samsung says it put layers of fiber inside the hinge to keep mm-hmm. all the debris out. Okay. Well, we have to see him once it actually gets released and then uh, see it works. Re- uh, reviews and updates on that. Yeah. It's definitely not a phone that I would get within the first couple of iterations. I'll wait until they get it right. Then I'll probably... Mm-hmm. No, nah, I wouldn't get this, to be honest. But just, I'd feel more comfortable getting it later on. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. a phone I would be interested in getting is this S20. Which one? The yeah. S- well, I mean... S20 here's, Plus, here's, S20 Ultra. Here's my uh, here's my thought process in it, and maybe you can help me out, Jason. Um, I'm always a sucker for trying to get the highest thing in in everything. So I was like, oh shit, 5G Ultra or, or uh, S20 Ultra. I don't really care about the 5G aspect of it, to be honest with you. Um, it's like why not? Then I'm like, do I really need the extra benefits of it? Like the only thing you're getting out of it as an ultra compared to the plus is you're getting a much better wide angle camera regardless. <laughs> it's so nice. It's going up from 12 megapixels. Me- yeah. From 12 megapixels up to 108. That's so good. You're losing uh, a little bit on telephoto actually, but mm-hmm. yeah, with, uh, with hyper resolution, you're going from 30 times from the S 20 plus up to a hundred times with the ultra. But I think for me, the biggest improvement would be the time sent optic zoom. I don't care about the resolution zoom if I can get a good optic zoom. Now, I'm also kind of concerned because if you look at that cutout for the cameras, it looks like a goddamn o- or like a, a stove top. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty uh, bad. So I'm I'm imagining trying to find a case where this thing's going to be problematic if you want like a custom case. How I mean, often do I you mean, guys use the camera? I use it pretty often. I don't. How often is often? (laughs) Once a day. I don't think it's worth the extra upgrade for a picture if you're going to be just using it once a day. So, wait, how... I am actually with Lewis on this. How many times would you have to be using it for you to be like, oh, like this... But here's the thing, it's like, if you have the capability of much better things, wouldn't that promote you using it more? I'm saying? I mean... That would promote it for uh for some people, not old people. Uh, a lot of people. <laughs> old. People. I know some people. <laughs> yeah, I said old at the beginning. I am um, one of those people. 
<clears throat> like say for instance, I could like say for instance, I can go all the way out and upgrade my whole PC right now if I want to. Mm-hmm. But am I gonna use all those capabilities? Probably not. More than likely, I'm not. I'm just gonna probably just hop on Rocket League again and then let's call it a day. <laughs> and then you should. That's what I mean. You should manage your money. <laughs> <laughs> that, and then uh, that's my point back to you. If you're gonna upgrade to the new phone, why are you gonna go to the highest one and when you can just stick to like the, the mid tier and you'll be perfectly fine? It's because I gonna... can do it via a plan, so I can already so I can upgrade via like little to no cost to me. That's okay, why. so. Okay, so you're saying by plan, I could say, okay, I can get a credit card and pay it off monthly basis. Well, technically, that's a plan, right? Sure. Technically, and the technicality of it. It just depends on how responsible you are with it, because you can't falter. Again, it's still going to be, if you're a one-a-day person taking a picture, I don't think it qualifies for, uh, to the necessity of going up to the highest tier. Yo, but if I get a one a wide-angle 108, might as well just keep using it, you know? Start recording with that <laughs> with that phone. I okay, mean, if you do, we're gonna keep you to that. I will keep you to that. I mean, he's not wrong though, because I I like the wide angle lens is the thing that's like I would say it is worth it. Like the quality of the f- pictures and stuff like that. You know, we should really have Jesus here. He would tell us if this would be worth an upgrade, <laughs> Mister Camera Guy. I know. The, the only thing, like I said, the main thing preventing me from trying, like, from deciding is just how, how it looks. I just personally think it looks ugly. <laughs> but I like me, would you want functionality or appearance. aesthetics? Well, well here's think, my thing, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. For me, I would not get this phone. Yeah, any, because because you, what it's emphasizing you're, you're is not the feature I'm looking for. It has an SD card. <laughs> oh, that's great. A lot of Samsung phones have SD cards. What I hey, look for does in your a Note phone 10 have is an SD card? two things. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't? It does have SD. Oh, shit. Never mind. No, that okay. Apologize. Uh, so here's the thing. For me, the two things I look for is battery life, because I'm mm-hmm. on my fucking phone all the time playing games, because I'm a degenerate. Mm-hmm. And second is processor. Processor and RAM. Those are the only specs I care about on a phone. I think you also care about storage. Well, storage, as long as I can expand it with an SD card, I don't give a shit. Okay, that's fair. That That's why I, I can never go to an iPhone. Because <laughs> you fair. can't expand it. I can't expand it. No matter how never. tempted you were for your Tinder profile. Exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm under the bus like this? No, I'm kidding. Uh, that is what uh, somebody I know did. <laughs> Wait, really? I can't call them out because they might listen to the podcast. So I will say that somebody I know did switch out their phone just for better odds. I'll say. I know a mm-hmm. person oh. as well. Oh, I think no. you guys know the same person. I don't think so. I think he knows the person I'm talking about, but oh. doesn't know him. Know him. The same for you, actually. Oh wait, uh, Nani <laughs> oh, <I'm> calling Louis? <laughs> <up? laughs> oh no. We both will call each other out on this. <laughs> oh, yeah, we would. Okay. And no, it's not that, Frankie. Mm. Yeah, it's not. Sorry for anybody in the podcast. Frankie typed in our chat if it's our one of our friends. And no, he already had an iPhone to begin with. Mm. Yeah, he did. Even though he doesn't like it. <laughs> well, that's because he has a whole light beam going across the screen. And he no, refuses he to go fix not it. Not anymore. What? When did he this He hasn't change? had it for the longest time. Oh, wow. Never mind. Oh, speaking of broken phones, today, broke my phone. Cracked it. <laughs> what? Front of the screen. It was bullshit, too. Time to upgrade. What oh, happened? no, no, no. Uh, okay, so, I was on my desk, and I thought I had placed it, like, in a good spot. But I guess mm-hmm. that I placed it just slightly off balance, where it was hanging a little bit to the edge. And I kind of, like, I guess the vibration of me, like, typing on my keyboard made it shift and fall down face first into the tile floor mm. and i was just using a uh regular like anime case you've seen the case i've seen the case so you know there's not that much protection yep and it fell face first and uh, as soon as i was like up oh, yep that's definitely a crack picked it up and i felt it i was like shit <laughs> right away that hurts but on the bright side do have the apple care and oh. it's still and it's still good. 
until the 20, 20, 2021. <laughs> 2021. And uh-huh. I can go into uh, either the Apple Store or T Mobile and just get it refixed. Okay. I think I, I looked into it. I just had to pay 30 bucks and that's it. You have to pay to get your phone fixed with Apple Care. That's so <laughs> weird to me. I mean, what the is. what's the point of Apple Care? Well, compared uh, to it, like actually fully paying for like yeah. a screen replacement and stuff like that. But that thirty. What, is he's, what he's trying to say is this: this person is paying thirty dollars, or he's paying a lot more for the plan. He's paying for a plan that will give him the ability. To buy a discounted guarantee, <laughs> and the the, <laughs> the viewpoint I, the viewpoint on this that I can throw at is it is ridiculous. Is, take it as insurance. It's not like a warranty protection. It's like insurance to the phone. That's retarded. So Dude. you're paying. That's basically your deductible that you pay. If I pay insurance on my phone and I break the phone, like not just the screen, the phone, they give me a phone. I don't. I know. Have to pay to I know, get I know. another phone. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that's not. I'm not saying I'm disagreeing with you on anything. I'm just saying this is my viewpoint of how it works. No, see, I, I know. Which is the unfortunate part. <laughs> I'm like, why? Why would you? Look, look, look. I'm not saying that they I hate don't... that. That I like it. But at least <laughs> I'm not gonna have to pay the actual amount of getting this whole screen replaced. But, okay, but I'm like, how much is Apple Care? The Apple Care? Just one yeah. time? Hundred bucks. So- <laughs> okay, so so I know, and it can expire, and it goes, and it and goes it can for, expire, and it can expire, and it's uh, uh, mine isn't expiring twenty twenty one when I got the phone twenty nineteen. Okay, so <laughs> two years, a uh-huh. hundred dollars to yeah. get basically a coupon <laughs> to yeah. fix your phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And that's just the screen part. I haven't told you everything else, Jason. Oh, no. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> prices for the, the like the, the Galaxy Z Flip. Base I think price this is, is, is $1,380. Do you guys think that's a, a reasonable price? Do you think it's too much? Considering the S20 like, Ultra goes for $1,400, I say that's a terrible price. <laughs> yeah, I agree. They, they're pretty much taxing it with a novelty tax that's what it is you can fold the screen guys oh whoa we had that back in the early 2000s that's crazy let me get 20 <laughs> but how fast can i flip it up and down without breaking, <laughs> without breaking it can i slam that One, shit two, three, shut four, when i'm mad at somebody and i'm calling on them i bet not how many flips does it take to break the center of a galaxy zip flip let's find so- out one, one, two, three. <laughs> three. Jason uh, holding his flippable phone. I'm so done. Now I'm thinking. Uh, hmm. Oh, Frankie, the last thing here. Oh, uh, are the the upgrade to the Galaxy Buds, the Galaxy Blood uh, Buds Plus, which I don't know. <clears throat> For one fifty, supposed to be better than the previous iteration. So, has, so what additions are they adding on to it? Well, it, it's shifted from a single driver system to a dual driver system. Has three microphones instead of the two. Um, <clears throat> it can run twenty two hours uh, with the uh, with uh, full cycle. So that means eleven hours on one charge, charge them again, then eleven hours on that. And apparently, if you have a compatible phone, you can charge the buds wirelessly. So if you hold the case against the phone for about five minutes. So give or take, it'll give the case about an hour of charge. Yeah, because that's been a thing. Yeah, that's pretty. Cool. I've seen it on other phones. And well, then I mean, it, with Samsung in other, particular. Yeah, that's what. And I mean. then it goes, uh, and then ship out. Uh, well, tomorrow for about one fifty. Will you Which, guys be getting it? No, I think that's too high of a price. It's getting to that ridiculous AirPod tier. Is one fifty? I mean, it's, it's just twenty just dollars more than the standard. Home now. Well, the standard right now is actually 109 really? on most uh, places. Okay, so, so, it's, yep. so it's on sale because I thought it was at like one. It's probably going on sale before they actually discount it even further when this releases. Mm-hmm. But like for me, uh, granted, I had a connection, but I only had to pay really like $70. So I don't know. For me, it's like 
it's getting too expensive for me to consider it as a good option when there are other like third party headphones with much better sound quality, noise cancellation, etc. And this podcast is brought to you by Raycon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. I mean, for me, it's like if, if a headphone gets to a certain price, I'd rather get a third party that has much better sound quality. Uh, on the inverse, there's also third party earbuds that cost much more that are also like premium quality. Yeah. But that's what I mean. Like, if I'm going to be spending 150 I might as well go big and get a really nice pair of headsets. Some audio for me. <clears throat> Let me just go home. I'm packing <laughs> my bags up right now. The Buds Plus, though. I mean, it just depends on how, how better they are. Well, the fact that they have three microphones, hopefully they won't have the same issues that the current uh, Galaxy Buds have. Well, I mean, you have them. You might as well tell us the issues. I mean, the only major issues is just, um, well, okay, the main one for me is the waterproofing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know what these are rated, uh, but the ones that I have right now can barely withstand rain and only a small amount. If I get too much rain, like, if I wear them and it's like a light shower, it's fine. But if it starts pouring and I'm wearing them, it could literally just destroy them. Uh, where a lot of, Third party headphones. I don't know about AirPods, but a lot of third party headphones had that issue. are well. I mean, they're rated for higher. They're rated for a good amount mm -hmm. of water well, resistance. When it comes to me, since I'm using AirPods and I have the uh, Pros, don't joke me on that, Jason. Uh, um, <clears throat> I've been I'm in so uh, in showers outside because I'm in the dealership, and mm -hmm. I have to go from my desk to one of the guru one of the shops. Yeah. And I've been in pouring rain and uh, still working fine, using to work out. And I'm, uh, I sweat a lot, mm -hmm. like pretty heavily. I'm pretty sure you've seen it at work. Yeah. So still no damages at all. Haven't had any effects on them. And I also take them to the sauna, which that's steam. So technically it's even worse if I use them like that. Yeah. But haven't heard any quality drawbacks or anything like that. Have not had any muffled noises or anything like that every any time I use them? So remember when we went to a soccer game together, and yes. the beer was being thrown? Yeah, that shorted out one of my earbuds. Really? Yeah. You did not tell me this. I did tell you this. One of did my you? earbuds would not work for like a day. Oh man! And then it came back up later, but okay. Yeah, that's how I knew how fragile they were with water. Oh. <laughs> uh. And then I did the research, and yeah, maybe it's they, just they the beer, cool. and they can't just hang. You know, they're just lightweight earbuds. I don't know. Uh, but... Another thing uh, is the the new ones, and I and the uh, old ones. They don't have active uh, noise cancellation, which the AirPods Pro and uh, Sony some uh, uh, Sony headphones well, do have. AirPods and Pros was... aren't active, right? It's a semi-active. No, it's active. Active noise Bro. cancellation. I'm gonna look this up. I thought it was. Uh, I didn't think it was active. Well, I thought it, it was active. marketed as active, but it, like yeah, it's something a, different. It's a switch. Well, we have, in a sense, two modes. Three kind of three modes. Three. Uh -huh. You have off, transparency, and active. Yeah, the transparency is okay. Off is meh, and active noise cancellation is amazing. Don't hear anything? No. Like, and you can turn it on with just one earbud. Like, if you have the other one off and you have the other one in your ear, you can turn on the turn on the active noise canceling on one ear and literally nothing from that side is coming into your ear. Gotcha. Yeah, which helps a lot because sometimes the dealership gets busy and I don't want to hear what's going on mainly to my right because that's where the, the majority of the group is. I just want to mainly focus on me and the customer. Yeah. Turn that on. I just hear my music just a little bit low, and I'm just speaking with the customer. I don't hear anybody else, and they had to come closer to me. They're like, "Huh?" And then I'm like, "Oh, blah 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 blah." <laughs> I feel like people would get uh, give you complaints about that having your your earbuds in. Oh no, everybody has them in. Our greeter has it in. Our manager has it in. Our managers have. It in. Our supervisor has it in. Everybody has like earbuds in some of them unfortunately have to have wire ones because 
they still haven't get, uh, switched over. Either they don't want to or they can't afford it. Can't don't don't want to. I was in that camp for the longest. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to pick on anybody like that at all. Um, and then once they make the switch, I mean, they'll have their earbuds on as well. And nobody says anything. Interesting. The people that do will make can make comments like, "Oh, are they good? Are they good quality? Are they any better than the Samsung ones?" Some customers actually compare their, their Samsung to ours, and we just talk talk on there. You know, it's like it goes back and forth, but never any complaints like, "Oh, you guys shouldn't be having those on." Interesting. Well, that's about it for the uh, the new the new uh, showing and stuff like that for Unpacked. Anything else you guys uh how do you guys feel though overall the switch that we're going back to flippable foldable phones it's a pad I agree I think <laughs> when people realize how terrible of an idea that is with like full screen phones they'll when the novelty wears off they'll just be like okay that was something we tried let's move past it let's yeah, go back to making get... them even bigger <clears throat> no we need to get them implanted in our eyes I really do think that's the next good step. <laughs> Just always <laughs> attached to my phone. <laughs> How do you charge yourself? Connect this small little piece of wire through your ear. Now your uh, <laughs> brain electrical pulses will naturally charge it. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. Jason playing his genius, uh, his his gotcha games on his phone. Uh, well, on his eyes. Yeah. That's the dream. Then you can see mm-hmm. your. your How would you upgrade through? though? You get your eye removed. Oh, they no, they switch out. They switch out components uh, with uh, updates. So it's software updates instead of uh, hardware. And I guess at some point, I guess the hardware would get obsolete, right? Like there would uh, yeah, be much yeah. better. Well, I mean, at that point, you have to uh, spring for surgery. Yeah, the camera is your eyes instead. No, um, that's that's... too much Black Mirror. (laughs) Look, after watching Black Mirror, all those episodes with the fucking eye cameras, nah, I'm good, I'm so glad you got that. I'm very happy you got that. I am good. (laughs) Like that, I think that might be one of my most irrational features. Big Pharma? Big camera. Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. Big camera. (laughs) No, I mean, if it could fix my vision, eagle eye it. (laughs) Oh, okay, there's a difference. If I can do cybernetic enhancements to fix my vision, that's that's different from having a phone slash camera on my eye. No, right? I, w- I would like, I w- ideally, I would like something that would like go on my neck or go on my arms mm-hmm. so I could bring up like an interface. And then from there, I could just be like, this is the future. Just get Google Glass. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's not get crazy. You know, I feel like maybe go- like the Google Glass is probably the next step, like with like, glasses and stuff like that but they're gonna make it more like compact and less uh noticeable i can see that and then maybe down the road having the full implants full augments yeah cyberpunk 2077 here i come but then at that point it's like there i feel there's the whole debate on like at what How point to download like more much. brain cells? Hmm. <laughs> Let me download more RAM for my brain. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. How much dedicated <clears throat> brain cells do I need to run Minecraft? Shit. <laughs> Not enough. You don't have enough. Uh. But anyway, so like in storage. <laughs> yep. Uh, right. But should we get just uh, quickly touch up on uh, the Oscar winners? I mean, what's there to say? Congrats. I don't know. <laughs> I'm Congrats not. to Parasite for being a foreign film and, will me- and, and, and winning Best Picture. Great. Great fucking movie. And great accomplishment, too. Not only winning the foreign film award, but also winning the Best Picture. Best Director as well? Mm-hmm. Which, dude, if you have not seen that movie, I highly, highly recommend it. I have not. 10 out of 10? It is the closest I can give to a 10 out of 10. I, a lot I of would... people, or not a lot of people, a minority of people that I talked to who disliked it were like, oh, the story was obvious. But I'm like, bro. Is that Lewis? What? No. <laughs> I How give that movie. So good. I give Parasite ten out of ten. 
Okay, regardless. And then the other movie I also give a ten out of ten. It's also 1917. It's so good. 1917. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I, both movies I, are good. I Look, saw it story, this Sunday, uh, and it was oh so perfect. It was mm, it was good. Mm-hmm. And Def- um, definitely deserves the the best cinematography award. It was. It was really good. And um, like I said, the storyline with the whole parasite and everything. I don't want to give any more like nice details about it, but for a foreign movie like this one to have such a good story. Deserved it, hundred percent agree. Mm-hmm. Yep, there everybody go. should go watch it. Yes, everybody should. Frankie, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. I have not. You disgust me. And on that <laughs> note, <clears throat> well, I'm sorry. All right, but, yeah, but other than that, it's like there's like best production design. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Haven't seen it. Um, great, it's it's a great movie. It's called Best Nine, Actor. Ten out of ten. Joaquin Phoenix for, for Joker. I gave that one eight out of ten. Which one? Once Upon a Time. Oh, Once Upon a Time. I will give it an eight point five. I haven't okay. seen it. It tickled. It tickled my fancy. Better than Django. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, actually, I can't say yes or no yet. I had to watch both of them. Now. I love Quentin Tarantino films. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't know. I say Best Actor, Joaquin Phoenix deserves it. Uh, best Director, uh, uh, the director for Parasite. Music, uh, original song, uh, I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man. Haven't, haven't seen it. Um, original Score, Joker. International Feature Film, Parasite. Makeup and Hairstyle, Bombshell. Visual effects, 1917, deserved. Best film editing, Ford vs. Ferrari. Best cinematography, 1917. And yeah, uh, best sound mixing, 1917. Best sound editing, Ford vs. Ferrari. And yeah, just, uh, I don't know, there's other ones as well. List just goes down. <laughs> yeah, let's cut it off at sound production. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I don't know. Definitely some of them well deserved. Of course. Animated film though. There there wasn't really much. Toy Story 4 one. Bo but, peep. But honestly, the, the only other like I would say uh competitor would be How to Train Your Dragon. But even still, like I don't know. I haven't seen Toy Story. I know it's on Disney Plus. I'll probably watch it this weekend. I still probably won't watch it and then I'll- a lot of these Disney films and Pixar films that came out were a lot of like goodbyes. Or sorry, not uh, not Pixar, DreamWorks. Mm-hmm. Were like goodbyes, technically. Like um, Toy Story, Buzz Woody saying goodbye pretty much together. The next one was How to Train a Dragon. Both of them. So I'm giving a lot of uh, spoilers on this. I should have given a warning. <laughs> Frozen, same thing. 2019, the year of goodbyes. No, yeah, but who knows? There, there's a couple of animated films this year that there's. It's gonna be. I feel good. Like the uh, Soul is gonna be good. Pixar. You said you're gonna go watch that, right, Lewis? Which one? Uh, Soul. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, um, definitely gonna be some good good year. Uh, this year for movies, in my opinion. But yeah. <laughs> Anything else you guys would like to touch up on? Disclaimer, I'm not a big movie person. But sure. I'm good. Awesome. Lewis? Okay. Anything, any last uh, comments you would like to say? Uh, no. All right, then. Uh, Ivan, can you uh, take us out? Alrighty, <clears throat> that does it for us here at The Burning Ship. If you guys like the episode, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel in order to hear some more riveting content from us. Um, normally, we do try to get these out once a week, but there are some times where we just uh, can't all get together, so do apologize for the week absence. And yeah, just so you know, if you can't, uh, if you don't have time for us on YouTube, maybe you have time for us over on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and iTunes. So if you just want to listen to us while making something, cooking up, or hey, maybe you're trying to record that movie in the movie theater, have us playing in the background as well. We yeah. don't, we don't advise to do that. 
I advise to do that. Lewis, no. And with that, see you next week. Bye. Bye. Adios.